Hey guys, happy Wednesday. How are you today? I pray that you are doing well in a great place, feeling amazing, maybe in a great space. Uh, you know, however it is that you are doing, I just pray God's grace over you today. So it's good to check in right here with you. It's It's been, you know, one of those things. Um, one of those days, the amazing weather, great things happening, um, and also just so much going on. So how have you been? I am just grateful to be here with you always. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's another wonderful Wednesday, and we're going to share an amazing time in the Word as well. Yeah, I, you know, but I had some distractions today with just setting up my system again. And, and I feel like every now and again, I have these uh, moments where, you know, some of these things don't work so well, get in my, um, my space, my background, my account, all of these things. But anyway, you know what? We're here and we're going to be encouraging each other in the Lord today as always. So welcome guys, praying that you're well. Hi, Markel. Good to see you, my friend. How are you doing over there, Pastor? Good to see you. And thank you all of you for joining. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm Karen Althea. This is what we do right here on Wednesdays at 4.30 Eastern Time. And this is Karen Althea Ministries. We just stop in here for a little bit. We, you know, encourage, empower each other in the Lord. We strengthen our faith in God. We just, you know, give an en encouraging word for you to get through uh, your season, whatever that season is today. And that's why we are here. That's why we are here. So we look to him. We bless God for you and for what he's doing in you um, today. And we rejoice for the work that God continues to do in us. So how is the day? How are things where you are? I don't know where you are, but is it, uh, you know, I pray that you are in a great place. I pray that you are well, that the people you care about are well. How are things at your work? How are things in your life? How, how's life for you? It's, it's so much, so much, so much, so much that we, we do and get involved in. And, and oh my God, some of us carry so many things each day. And we want to recognize you and acknowledge you for that. You know, we want to bless God for the strength in you today. Hi, Sister Juliet. Yes, I see that, Pastor, that you are well. Thank God for that. We want to just acknowledge the work of God in us and what he's doing, you know, for us, what his strength continues to, to do in, in the believers, in those he uses in our lives, in our seasons to encourage us. We bless him for that. We, we thank him for bringing, you know, all kinds of persons in our lives at different points on our journey, in our place. And, you know, we lift him up for that. Yeah. So I want to always, I always, always remind you of two things uh, as you join us that we meet in the Haven of Healing Ministries uh, on Thursday evenings and we do meet for Bible study. So if there's a place that you don't uh, have any, your study you are not committed to, or maybe you have Thursday evenings available, we want to invite you, whether you are just exploring faith or you're a seasoned believer or you're halfway there, whatever you feel your description might be or how you might define your walk with the Lord. This is a safe space for you and we want to remind you to join us there in the healing room. I'm dropping that in the chat and we are at haven of healing ministries dot com and you can find the link to connect to our bible study from our website so i'm dropping that right here there's also the link for our bible study there from the um for the healing room on saturdays we will uh, have our saturday services at 7 p.m Eastern time. So we want to invite you to that as well. If you have not yet joined the healing room experience, you're missing something. We want to invite you to that, to share with us, to share in what God's doing. Uh, we talk about everything. We share the word, the worship. We look at mental health. We look at the things that challenge us. We look at the way the word challenges us and what we can do with that and move forward with. So we want to invite you to share with us in that as well. And that's on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time recurring link. If you have it once, it's the same link. And so we want to also remind you that the Bible studies on Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 
feel free to check out our website for the link as well or you can connect with us and we will send the link directly to your inbox hi Sheikha, good to see you hello minister carla i see you happy wednesday to all of you hi sister donna i see you too god bless you and all of you who are joining and will continue to join and those who continue to just tag others and to share we bless god for you today i want to share uh, with you on a word that is uh, just stirring in my spirit maybe it's just for me maybe it's just for me but as always i like to share what my spirit is moved to in the moment and so uh, whether you are here and i miss you or you will join later i want to say very 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 special welcome to you god bless you for being here and so today we want to be looking at the word of god and the word of god comes to us today from exodus chapter 13 and verse 17 that's the one verse i want to read to you from the nlt it says when pharaoh finally let the people go god did not lead them along the main road that runs through philistine territory even though that was the shortest route to the promised land god said if the people are faced with a battle they might change their minds and return to egypt so I, I, you know, that word has just been pouring in my spirit this week. And like I said, maybe it's a word for me, but I also believe that it's a word that could bless your spirit. Because I want to remind someone today to trust God's leading. Trust God's leading. Trust his hand in your life. Because when I think of the, the background to this one verse that we have read today, I think of how for over 400 years, the children of Israel stayed in bondage in Egypt and God raised up Moses to deliver them as he to send him as their deliverer. And here is they've, they've witnessed so many move and, and mighty uh, miracles of God in the process of his leading. But here, here they are delivered, coming out of their circumstance, coming out of their 400 plus years of slavery. I mean, history shows that it's about 430 years of that kind of bondage, right? And I know some of us can identify, not with 430 years of bondage, but with some years of bondage, being in places that you have been used, misused, abused, that you've been mistreated, being in some places where you have not been celebrated but just tolerated, being in places where you've been chained and enslaved. And, and picture that kind of experience for the people of God in a place where they were used, in a place where they were beaten, and battered in a place where they lived as strangers, never ever feeling like they belonged. In a place where they knew this wasn't home. This wasn't the place God wanted them. They knew there wasn't any permanence in that place, but that was all they knew. Picture the many generations that were born during these years of bondage and enslavement. Generational trauma coming into play over generations and times and children and children's children to so many generations experiencing all of this right here. Now, imagine the moment came and God finally touched the heart, allowed Pharaoh after doing, I mean, sending all kinds of plagues, including the last one, which was like the straw that broke the camel's back. Because of course, when he killed the firstborn of Israel, of Egypt rather, that the Israelites be set free. That was when Pharaoh actually gave in. Firstborn of animals, firstborn of human beings, of the Egyptians, of their, their cattle, the firstborn was killed. And that's when Pharaoh probably got the message that that God, the I am that I am, was really serious about the deliverance of his people. And I want to tell somebody that today, that God is serious about the deliverance of his people, that God is serious about where you are at. He's serious about your deliverance. 
It is not his will for you to remain in, chain, in, in chains and enslaved and, and remain in, in um, places where you continue to be used and abused and misused. That's not the will of God for you. And yes, we are going to be in places of ch that challenges. We are going to be in places where there are storms. We are going to be in places where people don't like us. We are going to be. As a matter of fact, they ended up in Egypt because they disobeyed God and that was part of the punishment. This was how they got there. So it, it, it's not like, oh, it was, you know, just they just happened to have been there. Circumstances led them there. And sometimes by the doing of our own, uh, you know, lives and practices and so on, we end up in some ditches. We end up in some places that are hard. But that's not God's will for us to stay in those places. And he sends deliverance and he plans deliverance and he prepares a place of deliverance. And I want to remind you today to trust God's leading wherever you are, even if you're being in places right now that are enslaving you having you in chains, keeping you in, play, in, in that space where you know you're being abused and misused. Uh, do not get comfortable in that. That because of your boo-boo and your mishaps and your, your, your bad decisions that you end up there. Because God will, he sees the heart, he sees the transformation, and it is his will to deliver his people. And even if we don't know the time yet when he will deliver us, even though we're not planning for 40 years and 430, that there's a kind of grace and preparation that he gives for it, for that deliverance and that moment of deliverance. But hear this. So the time came when Pharaoh had let them go and God led them. Hear this. You are coming out of a deliverance that God himself had set up, orchestrated, put in place for you. And when you come out, you expect a kind of freedom. You expect the, the best. You expect the shortest route to the, 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 the quick happenings. You expect the victory to just roll out before you because, man, you've waited for this. And it never looked like that for the children of Israel. And I want to remind you today, don't be blinded by the fact that God has delivered you. It's not going to always look like the way you hope it to look. Like it's not going to look like the way you have it planned to look like. And, and some, some weeks ago, we talked about that in the healing room that when Legion was delivered, he thought of his many demons. He thought that, you know, his deliverance should look away where he would be. He would be able to follow Jesus, to go and do the ministry with Jesus. That's what he thought. He said, let me come with you. Jesus said, no, that's not the way your deliverance will look. Go back home to your people, to your community, and talk about all the good things. Publish, testify of the goodness of Jesus. And, and that was what his deliverance looked like. Now, when I picture this situation with the Israelites, I want you to understand that the divine is in charge. The divine is in charge of what's going on with you. The divine is in charge of your life, that God himself, it says Pharaoh had let them go, but God led them not through the way that was shorter, that was easier. That God, the divine who brought them out of this, this deliverance, he chose to take them through a special path. That when Jesus delivered legion, from all those demons and the man became sane and of a sound mind and sat with Jesus. That Jesus chose a path for him that never looked like the way he wanted it to look. So I want to remind you that your deliverance may not look like the way you want it to look. Because in our minds we think, you know, like after all this. It should be this. I'm, uh, it should have X amount of, I don't know, maybe perks to it. <laughs> but it doesn't always look like that. And as we look at that, I realize coming out of their deliverance, the divine chose for them a detour. Wow. A detour. Divinely appointed detour into the wilderness. There were options. The text says that they could have gone through the shorter route 
the shorter path, the nearest point, which would have been to go through the Philistine country. And yet God chose a detour for them. So hear me, somebody. I know that you probably have been coming out of your five and ten years and how many months of struggles. I know that you have waited for this moment of your deliverance. I know that you wanted it to look a certain way. But the divine is in charge of your path. He orchestrates the journey. Job says he knows the way that I take. He knows the path that you must take for the next leg of the journey to prepare you for what your deliverance is taking you to. Some of us want the deliverance to be right in this moment and whatever we see at the beginning before us, that's it. But that's not how the deliverance ends. God pulls you out of the captivity, out of the chains, and then he moves you into a place of Canaan, which is a promise to you. And he chose a path that was not the likely expectation because you know what we would have chosen the path of least resistance it's easy and that's a very reason that god himself decided to create a detour for his people so maybe maybe a month ago maybe five months ago you thought that you were out of the the blues you know the deliverance came and it felt good maybe it was seven months ago and you thought it was over in this. And then you find yourself into the space of the wilderness and you're wondering, what is going on? I thought I was out of the blue. I thought I was out of the woods with this. I thought this was the big break. But there's a path through the wilderness that's orchestrated by the divine maker, the creator, because he knows the way that you take because he knows what he's taking to you to um, next and hear what he says in this reason that perhaps just maybe just maybe if i let them go through the easy path they're gonna forget how many times have we forgotten my goodness it's it's weird how as human beings we forget a year ago some of us were in some devastating places and God took us out. And it never even took three months before we forgot that. Before that testimony was no longer before us. We forget that I was in the same place a year ago. I was in the same place five years ago. And God kept me. He delivered me. And therefore, what you're experiencing right now, it doesn't really look much different from what you've been through before. But how we forget so easily. And so the Lord says, Maybe, maybe the people will repent if they come upon war, if they see war, if they, and remember, you see the sea, this word for sea doesn't mean that it naturally is before, you know, if they perceive, if they perceive that right where they are right now, there's a little trouble brewing, they're, they're going to run back to the place that I don't want for them. And so from the divine came the, the detour. And the, the, as it were, it's almost a caution against distractions. Because sometimes things around you will look, will look like it's war, but it's a distraction. It comes up for you as a distraction to just take you off track. And that's what God was protecting his people from. So I want some of you right now listening to me today, listening to me in this moment, to think about that war that's going on around you. The war with the colleague at work, the war with the, um, the family member at home, the war with the person in your community, the friend, the war with the situation that you're dealing with in your business, the war, the war within the context of your church family, the war in your existence, maybe in school, the war that is around you. What is triggering that war? But ask yourself this, is this war a distraction? Is this war a distraction? So you see it, you feel it, it angers you. But maybe it comes as a distraction in the detour. In the detour. 
in the detour so you persevere through the process of what God is doing in you. For that was the very reason the Lord says, maybe just in case they come upon something that looks like war, that looks like it's going to take them out, that looks like it's going to challenge them. I don't want to for, for them to run back. He says they might repent and go back to Egypt. The Lord doesn't want you back in the same place he just delivered you from. No, he doesn't. Your deliverance would have been in vain. He doesn't want you back there. So a lot of us that leave some spaces and running back to it because it looks like war, like hardship came and you run back to the very people who abused you, misused you, sell you out, beat you up, bruise you up, batter you, all these kinds of things. It is not God's will for you to run back to your places of abuse, for you to run back to perpetrators, for you to run back to the abusers and those who enslaved you. And that's why he says, I'm not taking them through the short route. Because if war, if it looks like something is uncomfortable, they're going to go back to Egypt. And we know that. Those who know the story well, we know how this, these same children of Israel told Moses that. When they, when they lacked water, they said that. When they had no food, or at least the food that they wanted, they didn't want manna. They wanted the fish and the quail and, you know, the healthy stuff. They probably wanted all the lovely goodies, maybe ribs and chicken and some nice uh, pork loins. They wanted what they wanted and were accustomed to, even in slavery, even in the places where they couldn't grow and couldn't be the best of themselves. Places that tried to stifle and to kill their faith. But because it was easy, the meals were provided. It was easy. And I wonder if some of you listening today that you're remaining in that place, in that Egypt, because it's easy. You don't have to think how to do it. You're so accustomed to the hurt. You're so accustomed to the abuse. You're so accustomed to being misused. You're so accustomed to being told you're nothing. You are so accustomed to being put down. You're so accustomed to being told that you have no worth. That it's difficult for you. So very difficult for you to see yourself in any other place. And so God moves you out. The first challenge you hit upon, you run right back to the abuser. To Egypt, because it feels easy. So, you know what? Evaluate that war today. That thing before you. That looks like they're up against you. That, that person before you. That looks like they're here to challenge you. I, is it just a distraction? Is it just a distraction? For what God has in store for you. So maybe it's not meant to hit you down. Maybe it's meant for you to see. If you perceive how you perceive it. Will determine where you go with it. Because if you perceive it's war. You're going to run back to what you know. But if you see it as something to, bring, to build you up, to challenge you, then you will see it as part of the detour for what God has in store for you. So trust God's leading on your life today. Whatever it is that you're undertaking. I have so much comfort in the word of God in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. It, Isaiah prophesied, he says, then you will hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it, whether you turn to the right or to the left. When you are under the leading of Almighty God, when you turn to the right, he's there. When you turn to the left, he's still there. You remember how Abraham chose when he and Lot and, and their workmen had their issues and Abraham called Lot and he said, listen, we are brethren. Oh, our, our, our workmen shouldn't be fighting. So let's choose. He says, look out at the lands before you. Choose anywhere you want to go. If you go to the right, I will go. I will take the left. If you take the left, I will take the right. If you take the plains, I will go take the, the valleys and the mountains. Like anything you choose. This is the ease. This is the assurance for the believer. This is the assurance that comes for the person who understands the God, the divine, 
who chooses and leads. Oh my God, in, in shady green, green pasture, God leads us along. He leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. He, he leads us in all the spaces and places where we couldn't even protect ourselves. He leads us. I mean, Lot chose. And yet, what wherever Abram chose in the leading of Almighty God, he still would have had the favor of God. So I know sometimes we don't even know what's going on in the wilderness. We don't know where the path will turn. But you are under the leading of Almighty God. And he will bring you out. So be careful how you perceive the war that, you come up, that you've come upon in the wilderness experience. It's a distraction. It's a distraction because the detour that you're on was a divine appointment. And God is still getting you where he wants you. But he's building something in you in this path of the wilderness. Do not forsake your wilderness. Bemoan it, hate it, because there is a reason for this wilderness experience to prepare you to identify the distractions that look like war around you. I pray today that God's peace will be on you, that the assurance and the favor of God will be over you, that you will rest, that you will rest in the leading of Almighty God, because believe you me, if there's someone in the way that is not a part of God's plan for you, God himself will move them out of your way. He himself, he moved Pharaoh and his 600 chariots. He himself will move them out of your way. So do not worry about the path you're on when you are under the shadow of the Almighty. Trust the leading of God. May his peace be within your walls today and his prosperity within your gates. Amen. I'm so grateful that you're here today. I'm so grateful that you stopped in with us. I'm so grateful that the peace of God and the word of God is just percolating in your spirit in this moment and that you will remain, that you will remain in the faith of Almighty God, that we won't just talk about the faith and, and talk about God is good, but we will live that and believe that every day and see your experiences as a part of the plan of God to bring you out into the place that he's destined for you. So join me in Bible study tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. in the Haven of Healing Ministries. Dot com. You can find the link and, and, and just, you know, worship God with us as we study his word. Or I'll see you in the healing room on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much for making this your place. God bless you. Peace.